Um, so we need to devise a way to be able to answer all questions, okay? Um, and so that's what these things do for you. They're like the sine ratio is used in one particular instance, right? And the cosine ratio is used in another, and tangent is used in another, right? We can see all three of them here. And what it's based on is the availability of information, okay? You're going to make a selection as to which ratio to use, sine, cosine, or tangent, based on the information that's provided to you in the question. Okay, so if we take a look at the bottom one, tangent, that's our familiar friend from this morning and yesterday, right? We're going to say, okay, here's theta, right? Remember, if it's labeled, it's basically a number. We can say it's a number, right? And we said tangent was opposite over adjacent. Well, that's what we see here. Opposite over adjacent. Cosine, and I know these are new words for you too, cosine and sine. They're new words, but they aren't new words. Like I'm sure you've seen them or encountered them before. Like if I pull up my calculator right now, and most of your iPhone calculators, if you turn on the side, <coughs> you'll see sine, cos, and tan. Okay, they're all sitting there. Those are the trig ratios. Okay, so here's what you got here. So with cosine, when you're going to use cosine is your question, when you're provided the adjacent side length and the hypotenuse. Okay. And then when do you use sine? When you're provided the opposite and the hypotenuse. Okay. So how are we going to remember this is our main worry, right? You're going to look at this and go, oh, when do I use what? Right. We know tangent. Tangent's like rise over run, right? That's kind of a nice one, right? But what about the other two? We're not going to use run over hypotenuse or something. Like that just seems silly now, right? So this is why I pushed you towards calling these things opposite adjacent hypotenuse and why this morning I tried to emphasize the importance of labeling the triangles, right? Because when I come down here, I get this nice little analogy. Okay, it's called so katoa. Okay, what does that mean? Well, this is the thing. This is the thing you're gonna remember, right? So katoa. You're gonna remember this, and like at the top of tests or whatever, you're just gonna write out so katoa, right? This is something you're gonna learn to carry with you. Yes, Caleb. So katoa. Okay. Now, what does this mean? It's a memorization tactic. Like if you just say this out loud, you've got it, right? It's a memorization, or it's not even a memorization. It's a tool to help you remember what goes with what. So for instance, when I see so, this one here, the S stands for sine, and sine data is going to equal to O for opposite, H for hypotenuse. Okay. C is for cosine, so we're going to say cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan, which you know from this morning, is opposite over adjacent, or rise over run, okay? So you're going to remember this probably for the rest of your life. Okay, and I didn't just make it up. It's not as if I made it up and you're going to remember it for the rest of your life and I'm some brilliant genius, okay? This has been around for a long time, okay? Okay, this is what it means though. So in, in the event that you were provided with a triangle, right? And you wanted to measure the angle, right? But you could, for instance, say, okay, I could measure this side length. And this one, the hypotenuse. Well, what is x relative to the angle? It's adjacent. So which two pieces of information do you have? You know this and you know this. Adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, you're going to choose cosine because you have a and h. Right? Then you'd plug in the numbers 
and use the same process that we used this morning to solve. Okay? I'm going to ask this, and I don't really expect a response. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. This is just, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did this morning, okay? Just with sine and cosine and tangent all mixed in, okay? So we're going to do a couple questions. Okay. So just by looking at this one, and this is how I would, this is how I would label this thing all the time, right? Let's just say I'm standing down here in the corner, right? Or, it doesn't matter actually what's interesting, I could stand up here too. So let's just say here, let's just say, let's just say I'm standing down here in the corner. We'll keep it easy for a second, okay? We'll get rid of this one. I'm going to stand here at theta. So let's label this triangle accordingly. I'm standing here at theta. I'm going to look directly across. I'm going to see opposite, right? I'm going to see adjacent beside me, okay? Which of these are you going to choose? Well, if I wrote out so ka toa, which one, which, which information do I have? It looks like I have opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to choose tangent in this scenario. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. I'll write that out all the time too, just so I never make a mistake, which is equal to 6 over 8. Okay, then you could go through the motions of solving this question for what theta is, right? All right, let's do the next one. Determine if you use sine, cos, or tan for this one. Well, let's say, I don't know. What if I'm standing here? Let's go... Uh, look directly across and say okay well this would be opposite it's opposite of where I'm currently standing and this would be adjacent but I don't know anything on adjacent there's nothing written here no number right so you're like okay well this must make remember 90 degrees the biggest angle in this triangle is 90 degrees right it always goes opposite the biggest side length, which we called hypotenuse. Right? So here's the information you have. You have 20 as your opposite and 25 as your hypotenuse. So which one are you going to choose? Well, you're just going to look at the information you have. Uh, I don't know anything with adjacent, which means if you don't have adjacent, it means you can't use cosine. It also means you can't use tangent because you don't have the adjacent side. It's unknown, right? So you're left with just sine. So which means you're going to go sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to 20 over 25. And you could go through the motions again of solving. Okay, so let's do the next one. Um, standing here, look across, opposite, and beside us is adjacent. That sounds like I don't have any information on hypotenuse. There's nothing here. So you can't use either of the two trig ratios with hypo with an H in it. So you scratch them out. Which one do you have left? Tangent. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is equal to 9 over 15. Go through the motions and give me what theta is equal to. Okay. We're going to actually do this in a minute, but I'm just trying to get you guys used to what do you use when? Okay. This one wants us to actually solve for the unknown side length. 
Okay? So, <clears throat> I'm standing down here in the corner because this is the angle of interest. 37, 37 degrees equals theta, right? So you're standing down there and you're going to label your triangle, right? So go across. What's there? Opposite. What would go here? Adjacent. I don't know what adjacent is. So, okay. Uh, and it's also not the side length that I'm interested in, right? I want C. Well, where is C located? In the hypotenuse position because it's the biggest side length. Right? So now you know, okay, you're going to write out SOKOTOA. And I don't care about the adjacent side length, it's not asking me about it, right? So if it's not asking me about it, then why would I bother trying to solve for it, right? You also don't know it, so it's not useful, right? So you're like, okay, well, anything, any of the three trig ratios with an A in it, I don't need to use, right? Well, that takes out cosine and tangent. I don't need those. I can't use them. I'm not interested in adjacent. So that only leaves so, so sine. So you'd go sine theta, I'm just writing it out generally first, equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and you're going to say, okay, well, what information do I know? I know the angle, and I know opposite. Opposite is 3. So just plug it in, right? Sine of 37 is equal to opposite is 3 over the hypotenuse. All right. Well, or which we call we could call C, but there we'll... let's say uh, hypotenuse turns into C, right? Because that's what we're after. Okay. So we just got to solve for C, and this is going to involve. I just got to go back here. We need our trig table, right? And what are we doing? I see my angle, right? It's a degree. Well, here's the catch. We gotta go back and talk about the trig table here for a second, okay? So I'm just gonna go back. Um, so here's our trig table. I'm gonna get rid of some of the stuff on here because it's starting to look a little bit messy. And we're gonna have a conversation around this trig table now. Okay, so we've had some experience dealing with this trig table, okay? Um, what I want you to draw your attention to now is we now know what these things, these other columns are. Okay, so we're going to say, remember the angle, I'm just going to write this here for a second, 37 degrees. Um, remember what we're doing here, okay? So if I rewrote up here, so, ka, toa. Okay, sine, cos, tangent. Well, now you guys understand O and H, opposite over hypotenuse, this is sine. This is what we call the sine column. Okay, then we say, okay, well, that must make this adjacent and hypotenuse. The cosine column. And then you already know that the last column is tangent because it's opposite over adjacent. Okay. <laughs> okay, you don't need to make it uh, harder than it needs to be, Ethan. Okay. Um, so, what's that mean? Okay, so we here's our question. Remember, we're, we're talking about 37 degrees, okay? This is, where's our degrees? It's in the very first column. 
Okay, this column goes from 46 to 90, so we know it's not on that half. It's over here somewhere. So we need to go find 37. Right here. Now, your question now becomes, well, which of the three do I pick? Do I pick this one, this one, or this one? Well, what trig function were we trying to work with here? Trying to use sine, right? So you're trying to find the sine of 37. Trying to find the, tell me the decimal number that goes with 37 underneath the sine column, right? So let's go back. You guys can tell me what's, what number goes underneath here. Where's the sine column? It's the very first one. So if it's the very first one, here's the number we need. 0 0.6018 right? for 37. 0 0.6018. So this turns into 0 0.6018. That's equal to 3 over C. Solve for C. How do we solve for C? We can multiply both sides by C, right? Which would give us 0 0.6018 C. Is C by itself yet? Nope. Divide both sides by 0 0.6018. C is equal to 3 divided by 0 0.6018. C is equal to, pull out your calculator. Okay, you're going to say, 3 divided by 0 0.6018 equals 4.99. It's basically 5, right? Does anybody have any questions with that? Okay, it's the same process as this morning. Okay, the exact same process with the exception of you need to make a selection as to which you're going to pick, sine, cos, or tangent. Okay, we use tangent to introduce this concept because, because of your familiarity of using slope and rise over run. Okay. But there are instances where I can't measure either the rise or the run in a triangle question, right? And so you're going to have to have another tool to be able to solve those problems. Your tool is so Katoa. So it allows you to make a decision as to, based on the information provided to me, which trig ratio am I going to pick? And then do the same process as this morning. Okay? So what if that's for solving for side length, right? What if it's what if it's asking me for an angle, right? Let me try and find one of those. So okay, we can do an angle question too. But again, it's the same thing as what we did this morning. It's easier than finding the side lengths. Okay, why don't we take a look at this question? And something interesting happens. Okay, this is what's cool about trig. Okay, let's do this question. And I'm going to do it two ways. Okay? I'm going to do this question two ways. I'm going to get rid of my keyboard here. Two ways to do this question, okay? Um, again, I'm standing right here at the angle 23. I'm going to look across from me, okay? I'm going to do number one. I'm going to do all the work for the first way, all in black, okay? And then I'll change the color so you guys can see the difference, okay? So I'm going to stand here at 23. I'm going to look across. Okay. I see the side length 15. 15 is opposite of me. Okay. What I'm interested in finding out has nothing to do with the 39 because I already know the 39. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, I want to find what X is. Well, X is adjacent to the angle in question. 
All right, so let's let's just stop for a second, figure out what do I have? I have theta. Uh, it's 23 degrees. Uh, I have the opposite side length. It's 15. And the and the last piece of information, the two of the three, you know, the third you don't know is adjacent, which is equal to x, right? That's what we want to know. Well, let's just write out Sokotoa across the top. If I'm interested in finding the adjacent side length, then it has nothing to do with the hypotenuse, right? I don't want anything to do with the hypotenuse here, right? And with with the under this current like solution here, okay? So that being said, I don't need anything with hypotenuse in it. Right? So I scratch them out. I don't need sine or cosine because I can use tangent because it doesn't involve the hypotenuse at all. So then you just do the work. So you say, okay, <clears throat> tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Again, I always just get in the habit of writing everything out generally, and then I put all the information in, right? Because I find once I've made a list of things that I know, it's very easy for me just to substitute them into the general equation, right? So you're like, okay, fine. Tan of what's theta? Theta is 23 is equal to opposite. What is opposite? 15 and adjacent is x solve for x all right that's fine well let's go to our table well, i gotta find the table again <clears throat> and we need to find what angle was it was it 23 yeah so we gotta go find 23 and specifically find what decimal number is underneath 23. It's right here, right? So here's 23, and then I need to make a selection as to which one am I using. We said I was not using sine or cosine. We were using tangent. So you go over to the third column. Not this one, not this one, this one. Because it's underneath tangent, right? And so you, you, you keep this number in your head, and you say, okay, 0 0.4245. <clears throat> That's what replaces this, 0 0.4245. That's from the table, right? And now we say, okay, that's equal to 15 over x. Solve for x like you normally would, okay? You're going to say, okay, uh, multiply both sides by x. That cancels with that one now, right? And we're left with 0 0.4245x is equal to 15. X still isn't by itself yet. So we say, okay, that's fine. Divide both sides by 0 0.4245. X is now equal to 15 divided by 0 0.4245. And X is equal to, do the math, just type it in. Uh, 15 divided by 0 0.4245. Okay, now, I promised you I would do this question twice, okay? So here, everything in the black text is going to be the first time through this, okay? And there's a reason why I'm showing you this two different ways. Okay, I'm going to erase everything on here too, actually, and I'm just going to redo it in a different color, right? We'll do it in red this time. So... Let's just suppose for a second you did not want to use the opposite side length, right? I don't think it, it doesn't change anything, but you're still standing at 23, right? You look across, you see the 15, you're like, okay, that's opposite. Um, this is still adjacent. Nothing's changed, okay? And this is still hypotenuse. Hopefully, when I did number one or the, all the work in the black, some of you said, well, why are we just ignoring the hypotenuse? Why is he saying not to use that? 
I'm saying not to use it just from the standpoint of that particular process, right? But there's nothing wrong with using it, right? So let's let's make a list this time in red, okay? And I'm gonna ignore the fact that, like, let's just say I don't I don't like the 15. I just for whatever reason I don't want to use the 15, right? So let's just make a list. Uh, theta is still 23 degrees, right? Um, but this time I want to use hypotenuse instead. When the hypotenuse is 39. But I'm still interested in the adjacent. That part I can't change, right? I still want to find what the adjacent is. Well, adjacent is still x, okay? So there's my list of knowns in the red, okay? And now you're thinking, okay, well, now what? Why don't you write out Sokotoa? And this is, again, like you're not doing this calculation twice. This is just me showing you. You could have selected hypotenuse versus op opposite, right? So at this point now, you're like, you need to make a selection between one of these three based on what you've chose to use from the question. Okay. You could say, okay, well, um, I know hypotenuse and... Uh, I want to find adjacent. Well, nowhere in this list this time did I say anything about opposite, which means I can scratch out the trig ratios that have opposite in them. Well, that includes sine and also tangent, right? And that leaves you with the information, hypotenuse and adjacent, from cosine. You do the work, right? We're going to say, okay, fine. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, and then so cosine theta, sorry, I'll make the substitutions now, it's cosine of 23 is equal to 39 over, oh, sorry, look at, this is why I write this out, see? There you see what I did? I put the 39 in for adjacent. That's not where the 39 goes. The 39 goes in for the hypotenuse. Had I not written it out directly above, I wouldn't have caught that. This is why I like making mistakes in front of you guys, because now some of you won't do that. It's adjacent, which we said was x. So we make the substitution for x. x over what? 39. So you can, let's go find, let's use our trig table. Tell me what the decimal number is for this. Zero point something. We gotta go find it. We gotta find 23 on the table underneath the degrees. Oh, there it is again, right? We know where it is. And then this time, where is cosine? Cosine's in the middle, adjacent and hypotenuse. She said, okay, we got to use the middle column. So that means I'm not going to use this one and not that one. So I'm going to take this number here. 0 0.9205. Solve for x. All right, well, multiply both sides by 39 then. All right, well, the 39s cancel over here, and you're left with x equals 39 multiplied by 0 0.9205. x is equal to, do that, 39 times 0 0.9205. Well, it's like magic. I'll we'll call it 38 root 5.9. Okay, why is there a difference? There's there's really not a difference, okay, but there is a difference. There's a difference because, and this is, I suppose, a good point in time to show you something. Because we've already kind of talked about it. If we flip back here and just look at this, okay. 
our trait, the, the reason for the difference here is in the trig table. They're the same answer. Okay, the reason for the difference is this. If I were to type in 23 and then I used my calculator to hit tangent, right? Because I have this little button. If I hit tangent of this, what I expect to happen is a much more precise answer than how many decimal places did I get here? I only have four decimal places there. Watch what happens when I hit tangent here. Look how much more, look at all the stuff that we shaved off in our trick table. Okay, for our purposes and what we're doing in our course, the trig table is 100%, 100% fine. Okay, um, for engineers and things like that, when they go out and build bridges, like that's a bit of a difference. Like we're talking 60 centimeters, if that was a measurement, right? That's not small, right? And so you can see when the engineers build things, like they're not using our trig table. They're using the exact value that they get out of their calculator. Okay. But for our purposes, it's fine. There's not a huge difference between those two numbers for a grade 10 applied math course. Okay. That's fine. My point is whether or not you chose to use um, tangent or cosine, both would have worked for this question. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you one more thing and then I might wrap it up for today, okay? There's some homework questions down there. One thing that I think you guys always have to be a parent of, and there's a reason we've talked about like this in the course too. We try and show you things that uh, make your lives easier from the standpoint that you don't want to necessarily sit there and type things into a table values and produce points. and get, like That's why we showed you some of the things we did in quadratics and, and lines, right? Um, the same thing sort of happens here, right? If I looked at that triangle initially, I'm just going to erase some stuff. And this is like, this is where I'm trying to teach you guys to be a little bit more like self sufficient from the standpoint of being efficient, right? You want to be able to make a selection and choose the right tool given the circumstances. That's what like teaching you critical thinking skills is all about, right? You look at a problem and you select a tool that's going to solve the problem in the fastest way possible. I look at that triangle right off the top and I'm sure most of us, and I didn't really realize this until I got diving into the question. I was looking at multiple ways to solve this, right? What put me into this method was the fact that I told you or asked you, the question asked you, Use sine, cos, or tangent to solve this. And so you, your mind goes to this process that I'm showing you. And everybody forgets about the fact that this is a right angle triangle. Right? In that right angle triangle, they have provided me with two pieces or two side lengths. What tool do we have in our tool belt that allows us to solve for a third side length? I think you have a tool goes by the name Pythag, it doesn't start with a H. Okay, what is that you say? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. How nice would it have been, instead of doing all of this, we recognize the fact that I have two side lengths, find the third. The C value always has to be the hypotenuse. We're going to say 39 squared. I'm just going to do this to show you multiple ways. And actually, this answer might come out a little bit more accurate. I'm just going to show you uh, we can do a particular question in multiple ways and get the same answer for some things, or for all things here, right? In, in this question, we're looking for the adjacent side length x. So we're going to do multiple processes and get the same answer for side length x. Okay. Um, sometimes the work is easier for some processes than others. It's about making it a proper selection. Okay. Let's just say B is the thing that we want to solve for. So I'll leave it as B, and A is going to be 15. All right. Well, let's do uh, B squared is going to equal 
39 squared minus 15 squared. What is that? We gotta do the math. I don't know what 39 squared is. Yeah, that's 1521 minus, let's do 15 squared, 225 minus 225. B squared is equal to, let's do the math on that. Square root, don't forget the square root. That looks pretty close to the other two, I would say. Okay, that's probably even more accurate. Why is it more accurate? Because I don't have any decimals. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Trying to pull together everything that we've done, okay? I'm just trying to connect it all for you, okay? Um, one other thing I'd like to point out for you, too, is just purely on the selection, would you choose to do the black method versus the red method, right? Is the question that, why did he just show us two? Well, it turns out one of them is easier than the other from a solving perspective, right? Not so much in the setting up, but if you look at, what did I have to do over here? All I had to do was multiply both sides by 39, and it spat out my answer. How many times did I have to do that over here? Well, I had to multiply by x over here, and then I still didn't have x by itself. I had two steps on the in the black solution, whereas I only had one, one step in the, in the red. Right. So this is just getting back to, if you've done enough of these questions, you can select even to the, what's going to be the easiest from the solving perspective, right? Um, but yeah, sometimes don't think Pythagorean theorem is always going to work because I'm probably going to give you questions where there are no, you're not going to have two side lengths. You're just going to have one. And I'm going to force you to use one of these two processes. You're going to have to pick accordingly based on what you're given. Okay? So just don't just think that you, I'm going to always give you two and you can just solve the side length using Pythagorean theorem. I've shown you this for a reason. I'm going to give you examples of where um, you guys can't solve it with Pythagorean theorem. Okay? That was a good video.